Hello and welcome to my deep guide and the big books guide. The tablet itself holds a lot of options but they can be actually sometimes hidden, difficult to find, so the aim of this entire guide and the playlist is to help you get the maximum out of your device. As I mentioned, one of the limitations of the Push Books uh, platform, which is the online interaction version for basically synchronizing content between the books tablet and external devices, or in this case, your books account, the major limitation is that it does work, but it does only synchronize the notebooks themselves. So just the notebook mode here is synchronized. The library itself, with documents and PDFs or anything, it is not synchronized at all. And that is a major limitation of this platform at the moment. So hopefully this is something that they will fix over time, but at the moment it's not there. However, there's a workaround that I use that I massively prefer over any other platform simply because of the flexibility that allows me. It involves downloading uh, one or two apps depending on what you want to do and yeah setting them up so that you can have full functionality the way i have my stuff set up is to have a synchronization between either a google drive directory or a dropbox directory so that's why there's two apps one app for google drive one app for for dropbox synchronization now the really cool thing about this is that you can set up a single folder on your entire tablet or multiple if you choose to do so. But for the sake of organization, it's a little bit easier to have a single root, um, let's say my drive folder, and then use that as your gateway between your Google Drive account and this device. And for me, once I set it up, then it works really, really good. Now the app or apps in question are by Meta Control. So that's the important part. So they're called Meta Control, and um, the developer offers a couple of different versions. So you have AutoSync for Google Drive, you have AutoSync for Dropbox, DropSync it's called, but it's important that you check out who the, the underlying developer is. And there's a relatively new one that actually is now still in early access. It's actually not, this is a brand new thing that's coming up now. And it seems like they are uh, enveloping both of these into one, AutoSync, uni Universal Cloud Sync and Backup. Now, I haven't used that. And since it's early, in early access, then I don't know how it works. But these two, I know they work great and I use them on a daily basis. So you can install either of the two depending on what you actually want to do or you can use them both. While I'm installing, um, both of these by default the free version contains ads but I have actually opted out to purchase the license for both of them uh, simply because they are just really really good and I do not want ads to be there as a part of the system thing. Oh and also you have AutoSync for OneDrive as well. I just don't use OneDrive, but still you have that option too. So I'm just going to install the Dropbox and the Google Drive version. The, the interface and the usability is exactly the same between all of these versions. That's one of the things that I really do like. So the only option that I'm going to be choosing and showing now is the Google Drive, simply because that's the one that I want to set up for this device and that's the one that I'm using. But the setup and the operations are exactly the same on either of the two. As usual, we're just going to first do a long press and disable the white background. Now. There we go. And now I can go to AutoSync and it's going to ask me two things. First is going to be connect to Google Drive, which is something that you have to do for the very first time. So it's allowed to actually go there. And then you go to choose what to sync and organize things. So let's set that up. You will see some things that are maybe a little bit different in the UI simply because this is a uh, licensed version. So this is an ad free version for me. So you don't have to choose that. Of course, it's up to you. It's just explaining what the difference might be that you could encounter here. So first I'm gonna connect to Google Drive and you're gonna choose the account that you want to sync with. Then it says Google Drive connected. Great, step one, cool. Now we choose what to sync. So we tip on that and it's going to say, hey, I need access to storage on this device. Please give me permission to access 
storage and then you allow it and then you have a couple of options now I do know that this works so I'm gonna skip the test folder pair but for your sake if you're doing it for the very first time it's a good idea to actually do the test pair so that you know and you familiarize yourself with how that thing works for me I'm just gonna let me create my own folder pair and I'm gonna do setting things up. So the first folder pair that I'm gonna set up, and this is the only one, is you choose between the remote folder in Google Drive. So this is the folder that we're gonna synchronize to and from that's on your Google Drive or Dropbox or OneNote, doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So we're gonna go there, and because we're connected, now we are on my Google Drive. And as you can see, I can choose here, and there's the folder that I have, G Drive Sync. So I'm going to select this one because I want to synchronize to it. And you can see that in that G Drive Sync folder, I have an entire folder substructure that's already organized. So this is something that I already have on my um, Note Air, for example. So this is setting it up for the very first time on a brand new brand new factory reset device. And basically, yeah, let's let's get my content content of my libraries back onto this device. So I'm just going to select. Now I need to tell it, OK, where do you want to store the stuff that you synchronize and to and from on your local device. And now when we tap here, we go to now we are in our device itself. What I usually do is I go into books and then I create a new folder that's also called exactly the same G Drive Sync, which is something that he told me here and suggested. Cool. So now we are in books underscore G Drive Sync and I'm going to select. OK, so now we have the pair is being set up and now we need to define the parameters of the connection, how it's going to be. So we can sync in two different ways. We can sync two way, which means normal. Everything that's done to the synchronized folder is going to be updated either way. Then we can have upload only, upload, then delete. So that means that it uploads to Google Drive and then deletes from the local device. We can upload mirror, download only, download, then delete, and all these kind of things. So you can go into the help icon here to explore more about these things. I use it in a two-way because that's what I need. You can also exclude subfolders, delete empty subfolders, and select files by name. So for me, this is all fine. And this is all that I want to do. So I'm going to save the connection and it's already now synchronizing because I've established. And as you can see, it's going quite quickly through everything, monitoring what I have, what I don't have. And once it's done examining the Google Drive folders, and remember, I have like a lot here, it's going to give me a um, report and it's going to start the synchronization process. There we go. So now it's examined it and it's starting the download process and it's actually synchronizing everything. So without any problems at all, I've actually now established a connection and I am restoring my library entire library here. Now, the really cool thing is that it's not limited just to a library and there are different ways that you can set this thing up to actually enable this kind of thing. And that's something that I'm going to be talking through different videos to actually set things up. But this is the first thing that I wanted to kind of uh, show so that you can see how it is that I set up my library backup and how do I bypass that whole push books section. So this is how I organize and back up my notes, my screensavers and all of these things. And you can also set up that the default exports for, from your modified uh, documents or notebooks or everything that it all exports directly into this synchronized folder. And then you just tap on sync, it's synced and then you continue accessing them from wherever you want, which is a really, really convenient way to do it. And again, remember, I'm just using the Google Drive because that's how I use it. But you can use it for the Dropbox, from OneNote and all the other options that you've seen. Another note is that also the paid version allows you to have multiple connections to multiple different folders or basically have multiple folder pairs. One of the reasons why I wanted to actually use the paid version is to support the developer simply because I find the app incredibly useful, stable and transformative for the overall experience here. So it only makes sense to support the developer for their hard work. 
Now you don't have to let it uh, yeah, do it like this. You are allowed to swipe up and go home. And as you will see in the background, the application will continue synchronizing. So it says I'm synchronizing data with the Google Drive. So this uh, arrows basically two-way arrows synchronization icon is the icon when the autosync is performing synchronization op uh, operations. So while that's on, it's synchronizing. And when that goes all away, you will only remain with the autosync or the drive sync in this uh, case um, icon, which indicates that it's an active process that's there. So you can actually continue working. One thing that I would mention is that unfortunately, it doesn't send um, the app itself. It seems that it is not sending information to the Android system that it's occupied while it's synchronizing. Now, maybe that's a setting that I've overlooked somewhere so that you can actually make sure that it uh, doesn't go to sleep or anything like that. Uh, probably there's a setting I, I haven't really explored, but just be aware that if you just leave it unattended, it can go to sleep. And if you have like, I don't know, five or 10 gigabytes uh, worth of library to transfer between, then that's an option that you probably want to check into and make sure that your device doesn't go to sleep. But other than that, you are totally free to continue working uh, with your device as normally. And once it's synchronized, you're done. There's a couple of things that I think are noteworthy with regarding the app and setup. So you can go into settings by pressing, of course, the three little dots and go into settings. And then you have, uh, yeah, all sorts of different things that you can explore. Now, one of the things in the autosync is uh, really cool that you can check the autosync uh, interval. So you can enable autosync or disable it. If you're disabling it, you have to synchronize manually every time. And if you have it enabled, then you can have an auto sync interval. Now, while it may be a tempting thing to use it on five minutes, be aware that every time it checks these things, it's going to use up some Wi-Fi, it's going to use up some battery and all that kind of stuff. So you want to find um, basically a balanced solution here and a balanced interval. Um, one hour, I guess, works normally. But if you're working on something far more intense, where you're churning out work that you don't want to lose on a yeah more intense basis, then this is where you can actually set this thing up. And you also have this option of instant upload where it is supposed to detect new modified files in a device and try to upload them instantly. Now, depending on what kind of battery uh, management and battery saving method you have, it could interfere with this. But for that, you can go there and read a little bit more about the instructions there, but only if you experience that issue. It's well worth learning how to use this app and exploring it, in my opinion, because it's a really, really good companion. And yeah, while we were talking, obviously it finished. Everything is synchronized. And how do you synchronize manually when you do have something new? Well, you simply slide down, tap on Drive Sync, and then tap on the Synchronize button. So that's your manual synchronization. It checks, checks things out and says like, nope, nothing new to report. So very integrated, very nice and very, very easy to use. Now, the cool thing is that while well, remember my library was totally empty and I go to library now, you say like, what? But it's empty. What the hell is going on? Well, if I just go here and then go refresh library, there we go. So it didn't detect automatically that all of it has been done. By the way, I got 84 books here. Now, this is a little bit disorganized. And in a separate video, I'm going to be covering the library itself, how I organize things. But suffice to say, I use it in a different mode that looks like this. Mm, much better and more organized. So in this mode, if I go into here, I have my G Drive sync and everything in there is going to be synchronized and organized in a nice way. So just by doing this, I have the entirety of my library transferred on a fresh device. And as you can see, I also have my custom fonts that I did from before. I also have my notes that were done from before on a different device and all of these kinds of things. So not just the documents themselves. It's important to know that this is a full on backup where you have all of the files backed up. You can back up your screen savers. You can back up whatever you want. It's a perfect way of synchronizing your device and having an instant access between multiple platforms. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and that you've learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and like the video and ding the notification bell thingy to get notified when the new videos are coming out and when the new Big Books Guide chapters are coming out because they will be coming. There's lots more coming. Also, be sure to check back regularly on the Big Books uh, playlist so that you can, yeah, browse the content and find the answer that you might be looking for there. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!